So in taking a hint from the previous aerodynamic levitation experiment, I attached a small stone on top of the implosion ring just to see if it could levitate. And as we can see, just as with the implosion ring loaded with the weight plate, that the force of levity is indeed present. However, as the stone is considerably more difficult to balance, its rise is both unstable and lopsided. Of course, any kind of flight, including levitation, tends to be inherently unstable, and thus means must be dis devised for practical control. But it is interesting as a concept, as it demonstrates that rotation and or vibrations could potentially be practical as a means to overcome gravity and friction if the many technical hurdles could be solved. And then the concept of stone levitation itself, utilizing high energy acoustic vibrations, would likely still be the more viable scenario. In describing his implosive propulsion system, Victor Schauberg said that if water or air is given a cycloidal movement under the influence of high speed vibrations, this will lead to structures which levitating with incredible force are able to carry engine or generator housing. The term cycloidal seems like it might have a slightly different definition in modern times than it did in Schauberger's time, but it would likely be referring to the cyclone-like or vortex motion. In high-speed vibrations, we would describe today as high-frequency vibrations. In here, just through the chamber, we can see the fast-spinning air vortex with the help of smoke from an incense stick, confirming visually that the same vortex forces at work in water are also at work in the air. Schauberger's description of his propulsion system might remind us of John Royal Keeley's theories of lift and propulsion, which he described in terms of the vibratory lift and vibratory push process. And actually, there are quite a number of similarities between the ideas of both men. They both spoke of a relation between vortex motion and vibrations, and both acknowledged a balance and exchange between gravity and its polar opposite, which we would call levity. Schauberger and Keeley also found that certain geometric shapes amplified the energetic mediums of water and sound vibrations respectively, both being particularly fond of the egg or ovoid shape. Interested to see the effect of the ovoid shape on the formation of a vortex, I placed a small water-filled plastic egg on top of the water-filled cylinder as shown. The assembly was then mounted on top of a small fan motor. This made for a convenient side-by-side, -side, or rather top-by-bottom similarity, or a simultaneous uh, comparison. After running the experiment, my first observation is that it seems to take longer for the vortex and the egg to form, but once it does begin, it appears to descend significantly faster than the vortex in the cylinder. This might follow, as we know that the region, region surrounding the vortex column is at a higher, higher pressure and that there is an upflow there. The upper inner curved walls of the, the egg would serve to cause a pressure as well as an upward velocity increase as the upflow begins to curve upward and inward. An increase in upward pressure should also result in an even faster development of low pressure in the center region with faster vortex development as a result. It also seems to take longer for the vortex to recede, but these are just initial observations. The, con the containers are about the same height, but differences in volume of air and water have not yet been considered. But it would be very interesting to perform this experiment on a larger scale and at much greater speeds. Of course, along with the proper analytical equipment, such as contactless flow rate and pressure meters. And so it seems certain that geometric shapes can have a significant impact on energy flow and development. 
This has been even studied in modern day engineering by companies such as Macrosonics, which shows that certain resonator shapes can indeed mitigate the formation of energy dissipating shock waves, which otherwise would prevent the development of acoustic energy densities sufficient enough to be useful and practical in modern technologies and industry. Another interesting parallel between Schauberger and Keeley is that like Schauberger, Keeley began his vibrational research by also subjecting water and air to very intense mechanical forces. As Schauberger used rotation, Keeley used high frequency acoustic vibrations, first in the attempt to transform water into an etheric vapor, a substance he believed to be potentially superior to steam in developing mechanical pressures for motors and engines. Then ab abandoning that pursuit as impractical in favor of utilizing the vibrations themselves in the movement and propulsion of matter. Schauberger's and Keeley's independent arrivals at such astoundingly similar concepts via different methods points to the universality of these concepts and the inherent connections between the forces and energies that they spent much of their lives investigating. It also raises the very real possibility that the ancients may have also independently discovered and utilized many of the same principles over centuries of their own observations and experiments. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay tuned.